and we're live so hello everyone and welcome to this tournament live stream coming from the zanzibar red bishop cup so this is a two-stage tournament where we initially had a group stage of nine groups and ten players in each group and we are now in the final stage where the top player from each group has progressed through and this is a swiss style stage so uh, each round your opponent is determined based on your recent record in the tournament so we have in this game Devim and Sim17. So these are the two players with the best record so far in the tournament, both winning their opening two games and going head to head. So joining me on commentary today, I have Mother Love. So welcome, Mother Love. How's it going? <laughs> uh, I'll never forget about you, Mother Love. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm hyped. Good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Should be a good match. Uh, two recent tournament winners as well. Um, yeah. Obviously, Sim and Devima Puri, big names in the server at this absolutely. point. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We've got some wingspan pedigree on display. So, uh, should be in for a very good match. So, uh, we have already done the coin flip. So, Devim will be going first and sending out the invite. So, Devim, if you would like to go ahead and do that, we can get started with the game. And as always, good luck to both players. And we started. And we are uh, rolling. Oof. Okay. Not not an amazing start, but actually not terrible. I think it's a couple of good options. No, no. I think, pretty uh, good. I mean, the... You know, this, the, the thing is, uh, eggs in water and eggs in forest at the same time doesn't really work mm. that well, because mm. then you're not getting enough of either resource. Mm. Yeah, I'll be interested uh, but, to see if he does keep this blackbird. I think the the sparrow and the grebe are probably the the obvious keeps for me. But yeah, I, I guess when you when you have two birds like that and they only cost one food, you have a bit of flexibility with that that final choice mm -hmm. of do I keep the extra card or, or do I keep the extra food here? Yeah, my my thoughts as well. I think I I prefer in this case not keeping the blackbird, which mm. is pretty controversial for me. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean it's it's interesting because I know we've we've kind of had this discussion before where if you have a bird like the grebe and the blackbird in your wetlands together, obviously you're kind of getting extra cards and then you're tucking some of them. So, you know, I think the downside of something like the blackbird is that you know you you sometimes find that you're not drawing quite enough cards from that wetlands to be able to feed it. But with the grebe giving you those extra cards, it does kind of mitigate that. So, you know, do you think that is a is a combination that could work here for Devi? I'm not entirely sure. You know, it, it it's gonna depend on what it gets afterwards. But the risk is always that uh, with the blackbird is that then you have to uh, take the draw card action more times yeah. than you would like to, and especially if it's not a very high point action. Uh, and the thing is, the reason I don't really like it here is because the chipping sparrow doesn't give you extra food, so you're gonna mm. have to take food a lot. Yep. Yeah, and and you're gonna need extra cards as well, I guess. If if you know that sparrow is your only forest bird, it is kind of slow. I think especially in the early game, if you're only taking you know one food a turn. So I think having those extra cards to discard and and maybe get some of that extra food to to get more birds down is gonna be gonna be useful. But he has gone for the blackbird, so um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, it's it's not a bad choice, and and certainly we can see the how that's gonna work out for Tavim. I think he can get those down pretty quickly, but. Uh, yeah, here we go with the starting hand for Sim, and uh, probably not quite as good, but still not quite as good. Yeah. No, still a good, a good, um, good wetland bird in the in the Wilson snipe, I think that is, and then a nice bonus card as well with the with the rodentologist. So, yeah, do you think they're going to look to keep this this great horned owl, or is that maybe a little bit too expensive for the early game? I think that's definitely too expensive for the early game. The only thing I'd probably be looking at is the Chimney Swift, but at the same time with the Wilson Snipe, that's three squiggly boys. That's mm. a bit too much, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But hopefully he, gonna, he, he might be able to take the California Condor just as a first forest bird. Mm. Yeah, that's not a bad shout. I think, uh, you know, it's, it's easy to get down, obviously, with the with the no food cost, so... Um, yeah, I think ordinarily yeah. that, that Chimney Swift would be a pretty good pick. It's going to work for all the end of round goals. And I think that's always a nice kind of card to have up your sleeve. Um, you know, if, if these end of round goals in a, in a 1v1 are so important. So if that can give you a bit of an upper hand there, it's it's useful. But yeah, to, to get that mm -hmm. down with the with the snipe as well. Three, three worms, there's only one in the feeder. It's going to be a bit tricky. So 
yeah, I think it, it's kind of probably just pick up the snipe, get that down and, and try and dig through the deck and keep the other food and, and hopefully you can find something good for the forest. I mean, the counter is actually decent because mm. uh, one of the things with the Wilson compared to the Pybuild Grip, for example, is that you get a lot of cards, but you don't get necessarily a lot of good cards. Right. And just having one forest bird gives you a way to, you know, convert those bad cards into more food. Exactly. I think the key for, for Sim is going to be just getting something in that forest. Um, I know I wouldn't be surprised if they, you know, go for at least one off the deck and see if they can get something good, but absolutely, I think that that condor at least gives them the option to to discard some of those cards and you know when you're digging through the deck with something like yeah. snipe you are going to draw a lot of cards that yeah. aren't necessarily you know going to be fitting in with your strategy so i think being able to discard those always uh, always a good option to have definitely a weaker start for mm. sim uh, it's a bit of a gamble at this point if you know what's, what's going to happen basically i think so i think you know you look at um you look at Devim start, it kind of feels pretty straightforward for these first few turns. You know, get the Chipping Sparrow down. They're going to get a couple of food, I'm assuming, to try and get these two Wetland Birds down. So kind of those first four or five turns, I think pretty set in stone what Devim needs to do. But um, yeah, certainly you kind of look at Sim's perspective. It's going to be a gamble. It's all going to be on what can they get from the deck? You know, if they can get some good cards, absolutely, that puts them in a nice position. But if you're not going to draw anything good from the deck... It's it's really difficult to to kind of work out what the best option is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sim, uh, not Sim. Devim is looking to play the, the blackbird uh, on the left of the grip, which I think is slightly lower tempered, but it's definitely better for yeah. the few positioning wise. Yeah, I think. I think you're right. It's it's always better yeah, to have that uh, as your as your last action because you're going to draw lots of cards. You want to you want to be tucking before you're drawing more cards. But um, yeah, I think I, I I don't think it matters too much in terms of the tempo. I'm assuming they are going to try and get this greed down before going for for cards at least. So um, there is the fish in the bird feeder. They can easily take that and uh, and get this greed down pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Right, so not not exactly what no. I was looking for. Uh, no, and I think this is where they're now debating about picking up that condor because it is always again that question of am I going to gamble and, and try and get something better from the deck? Uh, obviously, they they laid eggs on the snipe, so they got two options uh, to draw cards, and oh. that's a nice pull. <laughs> they will be very happy with that. Um, uh, yeah, again, yeah, this is a fantastic pull because yeah. The star nest that's going to help really uh, for the for the end of round goals. Yeah, yeah, but also uh, I, I mentioned it slightly earlier. But the the thing with birds like the Wilson snipe copy, which is that you want a way to be able to profit from them more than your bird is in here because he's able to cycle cards. Yeah, uh, presumably in Wasteland, he he's aiming just for you know getting as many cards number wise with weapon right. action as he can and then just cycling them outside the wet i think that's the key yeah you know it again it kind of comes back to this point of you're gambling from the deck you're trying to find a good uh, a good forest bird it almost doesn't matter what you're drawing because you can tuck those under under the barn soil and hope for something better but yeah what do you make of this play going for the galanule um you know that's kind of another one of these birds that's going to give cards to Devim. so a bit risky but certainly is going to help yeah. him in that card not, advantage early not. on not, I assume he's going to take the condor now just mm. so you can play it and yep. you know, throw away his bad birds and then progressively pivot to um, grassland engine. But the thing is, they're both like high value birds, yeah. And the guy you know, is pretty okay for bonus cards, so he's not going to have to do the, the wetland action too many times, you know, maybe yep. maybe two times in the game max, you know. Yeah, I think that's. That's the advantage that having these kind of birds give you. Is you're right, you you minimise the number of turns you have to spend in your wetlands, and therefore you can then maximise the number of turns laying eggs or playing big point birds. And I think really that's going to be what what Sim's going to have to do here. Um, and yeah, I think you're right. I think this this condor is probably going to get picked up unless they can get something better from the from the deck on that first card pull. But yeah, they, they desperately need that condor now because they've got no food. And so they can get that down and then start 
discarding some of these extra cards for some more food. That's just going to help them get cards like the Barn Swallow down that little bit quicker. And I think especially for this first end round goal, if they can get that down um, and lay eggs on it, that's going to be really helpful. Oh, and there we go, another Tucking Bird. So um, very, very nice um, for, for Sim. I think they'll be looking to get both of those down in the grasslands and yeah. just start laying eggs and, and scoring lots of points. Hug tables. Absolutely, yeah. Certainly... It feels like uh, it feels like potentially this is going to be the stronger setup now for Sim. Uh, you know, get this condor down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really, it's the worms that's the problem. This bird feed is not really cooperating at the moment, um, and I don't think unless Devine can get anything good here. No, I think he's certainly going to be drawing cards for a bit um, and and hoping to get something better. But yeah, I think Sim's going to need to try and reset that bird feeder pretty quickly, or or they're going to struggle to get these birds down. Hmm. Yeah, a bit of an, perhaps an unconventional play for Sim playing the Galinul, but, mm. you know, ultimately, I think a pretty good decision and it obviously paid off. Yeah, I th well it's, it's certainly risky because they had those three food and to spend all of your food on just wetland birds when you don't have anything in the forest, it is a gamble because, you know, if, if I think if they didn't have something like the condor in the tray, that just slows you down that little bit more trying to get that food but um, certainly this is good they can get the condor down uh, get a little bit of extra food but you're right you know this gamble has absolutely paid off because that barn swallow and that purple martin that's uh, that's going to be a really nice grass and engine to to set them up really for the rest of this game I think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, look no he's going to be competing for the oh. first and, and what a goal. pull on the bonus card as well. Yes, yeah. Oh, <laughs> man, that, that's already six points immediately, yep. you know. Yeah, that was already good just with the Wolf's Snipe they played. But yeah, again, that Barn Swallow and that Purple Martin, they're already going to go down um, pretty cheaply, score lots of points. But now two extra points for each of those, that's that's going to be really strong for Sim. Yeah, yeah. you know, I think I'm... I'm... Uh, in the minority here, but I really like food web expert in, in base mm. game because I feel like all the birds that qualify are yep. really good. I know you do. <laughs> I think it's I think it's a good bonus card. I think it's it's kind of all or nothing for me. I, I can think of a lot of games where I don't score anything from it because you just don't find those birds. But you're right that I think naturally a lot of the strongest birds in the game do fit with it. So I think the snipe and the the swallow and the purple martin. There's also the violet green swallow. Uh, a couple of warblers as well, Bell's Vireo, you know, some really nice late game birds as well that fit with that bonus card. So I think yeah. it is a good option and certainly it's going to score Sim a lot of points in this game. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, I'm kind of excited for, I always get excited for the, the round two tray. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sim is getting everything but food. Mm. I mean, Sim doesn't, isn't going to need a lot of food, I think. Uh, especially if you can take cards there, get Okay, just one worm. Yeah, it, I, th um, I think that was key. If he could have got two worms there, that would have been a lot more straightforward. Um, but even then, he can just... Down, but yeah. If he can get food twice, he can then play both birds and just yep. start cycling immediately. Yeah, I think that's going to be that's going to be the key. Just get um, just get these birds down. And, you know, he, he's thinking twice about discarding cards. I think you kind of have to go for it because, like we talked about before, you know, he might only need to draw cards maybe one or two more times. Uh, you're getting four cards when you do that. And I yep. think, you know, potentially, like you said, depending on that round two tray, he might be looking to draw cards then anyway. So I think he's naturally going to have some leftovers to, to discard for food here. And just in the interest of getting some of these birds down more quickly, I think, um, yeah, go for the discard and getting that extra piece of food is, is the right call here. Yeah. Taking a seed, presumably, sort of him can't be won. Yeah, I imagine that's the that's the thinking at least because um, you know the the rodent would be useful for Sim. I imagine he's going to look to get this woodstock down at some point. Obviously, going to help get the bonus card, but also it fits with the rodentologist that he started with. So that's another couple of points. So yeah, I think he, he's kind of given himself that option of okay, if I go for food again, I can take the rodent discard and then go for the reroll, and there's always a good chance of getting a worm there. So I think that's a, a pretty safe bet for Sim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so Devim gambling on the deck again. Um, Ooh, not not bad at all. Not bad, actually. not bad. I think some good, 
uh, options in there. I noticed he had the double bird uh, on a previous turn, so could potentially look at playing that with the black with the black vulture and just maybe extending the grass, uh, extending the forest out a little bit, getting a bit of extra food. But um, yeah, the waxwing as well might be an option, um, just yeah. purely from all these cards he's getting, but also. Again, you kind of look at your opponent and see the, the, the birds they've got in their wetlands to give you extra cards. Uh, might not be a bad shout for just getting a little bit more food. I think Waxwing Mockingbird at this point, mm. I would probably bank on both into Grassland. Yep. Um, and to go for, you know, only Grassland and Wetland. Uh, but that might be risky, but, you know, that's a case where the Blackbird's going to hold you back here. Yeah, I mean, what do you make of, uh, you know, potentially going with the Mockingbird in the forest and using that to copy the Sparrow Ooh, yeah, and yeah. then maybe you can avoid the Grasslands. You know, he's not got a lot of amazing Grassland birds at the moment. So, you know, potentially he could he could look to just go for the forest and, and again, you're still skipping out uh, one habitat. But I think that kind of forest, wetland sort of hybrid could, uh, could potentially be an option. Yeah, I think you're right, actually. I think that works better. Um, yeah, maybe... As well with the California Quaid, mm. but that's an expensive bird. It is, it is. Actually, but not, not... He, yeah, he might be able to. He might be able to get it down. I think once the key is getting that second forest bird, because at the moment Devim really is struggling for food. You know, only one food a turn, potentially two if he's discarding. But I think getting that second forest bird down and just helping yourself get extra points, but more importantly, that extra food is really going to help get some of these birds down a lot quicker. Yeah. So what do you think the play yeah. is for Sim here? I think the the tray is is not an amazing one. Probably has his eye on that um, that night heron purely for the bonus card points. But yeah, I think he was really hoping for a nice uh, forest bird. You know, maybe something like a chickadee or a nuthatch just to help get extra food. But um, you know, do you do you go for cards here? It looks like he is, and then maybe just try and get this uh, would... this Martin down as well. I would take the the kinglet. Mm. Mainly because when you have, he's gonna have a strong grassland engine and no realistic way to mm. get a lot of food. Uh, so that's gonna be a way for him to clear spaces, get more spaces, yeah. and you know, for cheap. It's also pretty decent for the third and fourth end of round. Yeah, yeah, that's um, a good point. It looked like he was going for the Cass and Sparrow though, which is interesting. I think eggs probably not really the priority at the moment. You know, you're gonna get that purple martin down, and and suddenly. That's a five-point grass, and so you're going to want to be naturally laying eggs anyway. I don't think you particularly need any more eggs from something like the sparrow, but you know, what do you what do you make of that? Well, it's a bird that scores points at the end of the day, but yeah. you know, yeah, I, I, you are looking at spaces, and he does have quite a few, but probably not enough to um, justify the cutting spell. Yeah. Yeah, he's I, mean, thinking... I think the kinglet is is the one I take here because I don't yep. think uh, the V with his current forest setup would jump on the black crown night heron. No, no, I can't he see just it. Can't play. I can't see it happening. I mean, uh, you know, I I might be looking at that if I'm sim just for the bonus card, but uh, it is going to be tricky to play again with this kind of weak food set. But uh, flicker, uh, yeah, ordinarily not a bad option, but given the current bird feeder situation, probably not what they're hoping to see but you never know you might get some good re-rolls oh and another tucking bird <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know i think this is kind of signaling the the wingspan gods are signaling to sim get these birds down in the grasslands and start laying eggs because here's some more um to to get you started yeah then. yeah Oof. it's gonna be very hard for mm. the thing to compete here because obviously we just saw you got the eastern feed mm. but the thing is um Sim has so many more like cheap, exactly. good birds to play. Uh, he's going to be able to set up an amazing grass and engine. And uh, just go from here, even with the blackbird. I mean, now he has uh, four talking birds if he plays the, the blackbird. Mm. Uh, I think he can definitely justify it. Yeah, this is a tricky spot for Devim because I think ordinarily, you know, the Eastern Phoebe comes up and you, you feel happy because it's a good bird. It's going to work with these end of round goals, uh, help get you a bit of extra food. But it's just going to help Sim so much more, I think, at this stage with those those free worms. You know, like you said, he's got a lot of these cheap birds. They're only going to cost one worm. So just too many activations on that Phoebe. I think I would be cautious about that in terms of giving away uh, a bit too much free food to Sim. But 
you can tell he's kind of thinking about it and he's he's looking at the food in the feeder and it's a bit of a mixed bag in terms of the birds he's trying to get down so um yeah i think this is this is going to be a really key couple of turns for Devim here because there's a lot of different avenues he could go down you know do you go for the phoebe in the in the grasslands like i think a lot of players would consider you know, he's looking at that waxwing that we talked about before um i think he is i mean the waxwing discounting. phoebe would definitely yeah. be a decent grassland it would be it would be you know you play the waxwing you lay eggs and that's going to give you the cherry to to play the phoebe so um i certainly think that's not a bad option um especially because then i think he's looking at that mockingbird as well you know the the waxwing and the phoebe combined are going to give you the exact food you need for that so um that does kind of look like the way that the way that Devine's going to be going here man the birds seem are, get, mm. are getting is getting uh uh pretty outrageous at this point <laughs> yeah i think that that egret stalk if he can do that double play later in the game that's going to be huge but it is going to be yeah, so dependent both, on the on the forest both are wood anthologies exactly exactly it's going to score huge points it's going to get you another bonus card uh, but it's expensive, you know, that's six food for those those two birds. Uh, that's going to be really, really tricky, I think, for Sim, given this uh, this forest situation. So, yeah, are they going to look at playing the, the flicker here, do you think? It's, you know, it's not a, it's not an amazing situation with just that one worm, but, you know, it turns yeah. it turns a seed that you don't want into a worm that you do want, and then you can start getting some of these more birds down. You know, Sim doesn't know that Devim has the Eastern Phoebe at the moment and and I think that yeah. is going to factor into this decision yeah I mean equally you know it looks like the film is uh, switching to grassland which I would definitely do in his position mm. uh, because the film doesn't know that Sim has not three talking birds in his yeah game. yeah that's the grassland that's the thing I think this is this is a case where if you knew what birds your opponent had picked up you know maybe they're in the tray um, and, and you'd seen them take them, that's going to affect your decision-making a little bit. But like you say, you know, both players have got some really strong birds in their hand and the other player doesn't know what's there. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, if Devim knew that Sim had the Purple Martin and the American Robin that they could easily get down with a couple of worms, they would think twice about playing this Eastern Phoebe. But, uh, you know, you can only go with the information you've got. And, and I think you're right that... Most players would go for the for the grasslands here, and it's certainly not a bad option for for Devine to just help generate some points, but also crucially some more food as well. Yeah, man. Um, I think. Ah, is it too early to call? You know, <laughs> place your bets now. I think it is. It's. Um, I, I. I honestly, cause... I don't know which way this is going to go because you know, there's there's lots of lots of variables at play. You know, depending on who's going to blink first who's gonna reveal their hand first at the moment um you know i think if yeah. if if Devin gets this eastern phoebe down as quickly as we expect him to that's going to impact what sim does but equally you know if yeah. they if they look to get this flicker down that's they're kind of committing to to getting that extra food which i think they will need later in the game at least but yeah this is this is a real kind of crucial moment in time i think for for seeing how this game is going to play out The the tray the, the bird feeder is actually quite strong for Devi mm. because I think he might be looking into playing the the heron. If he can get a worm and a fish, he can play the Phoebe and the heron. Um, and then obviously with one quest and activation, play the mockingbird. Yeah. And all of a sudden he's in a pretty decent position. Yeah, I think that 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 has to be the aim here for Devim is just getting this grass and set up pretty quickly um uh, and yeah you know trying to trying to get some of these big point birds down uh obviously his his grasslands the way we're assuming it's going to be set up is uh you know it, it's going to need cards to to fuel that waxwing so he might need to go back to the to the wetlands every so often and i think if you know that that's going to be the case that you do have to go for cards every so often you know you should time that for when there's a big point bird in the tray and, and really try to make the most of that um so yep. yeah we'll, we'll we'll see how this plays out but uh we we do as expected have some questions in the chat that i see i see you're trying your hardest to answer about the swiss style <laughs> format yeah I don't, I don't know i'm doing my best <laughs> you're doing your best well you're doing better than me um yeah i'm sure there's someone on discord who can explain to you in details hopefully what a swiss tournament 
is that the way I understand it, there were groups and they played round robins between the groups yeah. and then uh, the best of each group progressed. Yeah. So it's not a full round robin with everyone. No. Um, no. So the the idea, to... yeah, the the idea behind the Swiss, I think, is that uh, you don't do full round robin. You kind of, but it's not knockout either. So everyone stays in, um, but you get matched up with an opponent based on similar records. So Davim and Sim are playing because they both were the only two players to win their first two games. And so they get matched up. And then equally, you know, we had some players who won and lost one of their, their opening games. So then they get paired. And we had other players who lost both their opening games. So they get paired. And then ultimately, the idea is that the strongest players in the tournament are going to play each other, um, you know, as this tournament progresses. And then, um, yeah, whoever is kind of at the top has naturally played the best players and beaten them, so they're going to be the champion. But I think there is a little bit of uncertainty in terms of just how long this is going to go on for. Um, but yeah, we'll, we we will keep everyone updated um, as the as the draws come out. But um, certainly an Tim interesting. Seems to be muffing this sounds carefully. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. Just said that the flicker is good for the third end of one. And while I agree, the thing is, uh, it's still in a way costs you can't. To play the flicker, but as well, and oh, I've been discussing chat. <laughs> I think we just had a bit of uh, a bit of robot mother love there for about twenty seconds. So yeah, uh, yeah, I've been disconnected from everything. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure if it was me. I was kind of waiting for the you know the the circle of doom to come up and and kick me off the YouTube stream, but um, no, hopefully. Okay, I'm back. I'm okay, back. good. You sound you um, sound much nicer than you did about thirty seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's happening with Sim anyway? They're thinking They're long and hard. In board, uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think I think this is this crucial point of do they play the flicker? Oh, he, sa he said I may think for long here. Okay. Uh, in a in our super secret chat for the audience <laughs> who's wondering where I get that info from. Don't tell anyone about the secret chat. <laughs> uh, so. He might actually be thinking about how many cards yes. he wants to keep in his hand. Exactly. I think that's the kind of this is the this is the point because you know if you if you play the flicker, you then have access to two food and you don't need to discard. So then at that point, you could probably get these birds down in your grasslands and just lay eggs lots and not have to worry about going back to your wetlands to try and get extra cards. You know that's kind of that's option A, and then option B is you, I don't play the flicker. I go for food instead and I start, you know, discarding some of these cards. I think naturally there's you know two or three cards in that hand that you probably aren't gonna look to play. So you could discard some yeah. of them, try and get these tucking birds down, um, and kind of really just get this grass and set up because they've got some really strong birds. I think it's so crucial when you have these strong birds to get them down as soon as possible. That you know, the longer you go into the game without playing these birds, you're you're kind of wasting their potential a bit. So um, it does look like oh, and he's going to throw the egret. That is not the bird I was expecting to go, but yeah. But the way I was looking at it is, uh, it seems pretty difficult for Sim at this point to play an egret um, with mm. talk in one go. You know, as good of a play as it is, I don't really see it happening. Yeah, but do you not still keep it anyway? You know, I think there's some other birds in there. You know, I kind of look at that blackbird, maybe even the hermit thrush. You know, and the flicker, if they're yeah. not going to play that, you know, maybe they're going to play that now and hope on the reroll. But I think there are some other birds I would have looked to get rid of first because you never know. You know, it's maybe a, you. A statement. Yeah, but, you know, maybe you stumble into a raven or something and suddenly have really easy access to food. And then you're going to regret not keeping hold of that, of that egret because it's just such a huge play. Um, yeah, I, I think I would have looked to keep hold of it, but. Um, yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. I would also have kept hold of it. Yeah, but there we go. So I think Devim 
they had a lot of time to think about that turn, so unsurprisingly they do uh, go for the eggs, and I think we can expect to see this this Phoebe go down. Um, and, and that's the point where Sim is going to kind of, I guess, feel happier about not building up this forest too much because they know um, they, they're going to get some some free worms from that. But yeah, it's it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how how Sim does react to this this Phoebe going down. I mean, it is getting pretty well, not exactly, but a bit late in the game. You know, he's only going to get his mm. his quest and set up by his, actually if he gets it by the beginning ish of round three it's still going to be really good um so not that late actually i take back what yeah. i said <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think uh, you know really i think for me if you can get the foundation of your grass and set up in these first couple of rounds that's the target so i think if you can you know if you're if you're devim you're looking to obviously get this wax wing down as they have done and then the phoebe and then potentially that mockingbird as well i think that's the setup that you're looking to go for uh, you know, if you're Sim, you want to get a couple more of these tucking birds down and really start just laying some eggs and scoring lots of points and cycling through the deck. I think if you can do that in these yeah. first couple of rounds, that's that's kind of key for me. Um, you know, you leave it any later than that, then you really do kind of limit your your potential there. But uh, here we go. Looks like maybe the flicker is back on the menu. Uh, bit of a gamble, I guess. Going for this reroll, but... is yeah. Yeah. I think the Grassland is not bad at all, because then it just means he can omit to play the Blackbird altogether and just have, uh, what is it, a 7-point engine? Yeah. With his two other tucking birds. It is It is still a gamble, and... though, because you you limit yourself in that food production. And also, you know, this point was made in the chat before about how nice that flicker could potentially be for that third end of round goal. Uh, you know, potentially you're going from from losing it to winning it with a bird like that. That's quite a big point swing. So, yeah, obviously it's worked out with the with the two worms, but I think I still would have looked to to play it in the forest there rather than the grasslands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I agree with that. Um, yeah. It's like every play is decisive at this point. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think it is. It's it's that it's very key. This kind of transition. As you go from sort of through the mid game into the late game, you know, a couple of kind of misplays here or there can can really impact you and uh, and carry through into the rest of the game. So, um, yeah, I think both players are going to have to 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 kind of think carefully about what they're doing and, and make sure they get the right birds down at the right time. But um, yeah, kind of unsurprisingly, I think like we said to Veeam, getting that Phoebe down that puts them in a in a strong position for this uh, for the second end of round goal as well. So they'll be pretty happy with that. And, uh, and yeah, for Sim, pretty straightforward, I think. Start laying eggs, hammering this grass and uh, getting the card cycle and uh, and just hope for some for some better birds, really, that, that they can look to get down pretty quickly. Yeah. Does, does Devim have uh, a fourth forest bird to play? Because he has two double birds. Mm. Uh, he doesn't. Um, and I would be potentially looking at that that woodpecker that's that's just come up in the tray. Um, as, a, as an option, you know, we we know Davim is going to have to go for for cards at some point. Um, obviously, with the with the grass and he's got set up, that's going to be costing cards on the waxwing. So uh, I think he needs to kind of think a little bit about uh, timing when that is, and then sort of counting. You know, how many turns have I got? How many cards am I going to need to play? How many cards am I going to need to tuck? Um, but I think as well, he's got the Forester bonus card, so. You know, he obviously there's two double birds going to work for that. He's kind of looking for that third uh, bird to get yeah, down yeah. that's going to the, fit that as well. The woodpecker definitely, yeah, definitely a really good pick for the Vim here, mm. especially because it's it's really easy to play with his current grassland. Oh, for sure, yeah, it, it exactly eats the food that you're generating in that grasslands anyway. As do those two double birds. So, um, yeah, I think uh, if Sim doesn't pick this up here, which uh, I wouldn't be too surprised if they do, but. Um, yeah, I think I think Devim has to be looking at it. Oh, and Sim is going to take it. So um, slightly easier decision, I think, for for Devim here in terms of um, you know what they do on their next turn. But um, yeah, good. Uh, ooh, ooh. There we go. <laughs> Some hesitation here. It's a little bit of hesitation, but um, yeah, as uh, as pointed out in the chat, as we mentioned before, I think Sim's going to be pretty happy seeing this Phoebe. It does kind of. Uh, make their life a little bit easier just in terms of um, you know not having yeah, to generate much food 
don't agree with the um the vim just tucked his mm. house plan mm. which i think he doesn't have for now a fourth grassland bird to play at all i think he would have been a good bird to play with the mockingbird just to complete your grassland relatively. Uh, so I, i'm not sure why he tucked it you know mm. yeah i mean you kind of look at the other birds in his hand and you think about those two big point wetland birds you know, how is he going to afford both of those? At the moment, he's kind of generating a lot of worms, a lot of cherries. He's not generating fish or rodents, and that can be quite difficult. So, um, yeah, I'm not really sure what he's doing here. Is the mockingbird going in the forest? It is. I did not expect that. Okay, okay. <laughs> I understand. It's maybe the Vim so. Yeah. Uh, seems absurd grassland, and for. You I know. think so. <laughs> I probably won't invest Ooh. too much energy. Oh, hummingbird. Hummingbird and the Bell's Vario and the Trumpeter Swan. So very nice. Very nice round three tray. Um, certainly Ooh, that... going first here. Yeah. I think Devim's going first because uh, he, he started the game. Yeah, he is. So oh, you've got to take that hummingbird, haven't you? you? You can't let Sim have that because that's basically the, the perfect or almost perfect fourth, uh, fifth even grass and bird to, to get down for them. I think that's that's a crucial deny here if you're Devim. Yeah, you kind of have to. At the same time, uh, Bell's view is also absolutely good mm. for Sim. Yeah, I think that I think he. Okay, he's gonna take both. Yeah. The only thing I don't like with uh, the play here is that now he played his two uh, forest birds and he didn't mm. complete forester. Whereas if he went more exactly. heavy to us and he could have. Oh, Ooh, and here we Raven, go. Okay. Well, that's game over. <laughs> and that's. That's yep. for entologists as well. And it's for entologists, yeah. So when I was saying that the, the hummingbird was the almost perfect final grass and bird, that raven is is the, the perfect one. So yeah, that's and that's why you keep something like the, the great egret, you know. That is why that's that why, is you, keep why you keep the great egret. Because yeah. now now you get such easy access to food and it's kind of on that borderline of is it maybe just that little bit too late for the something like the raven? But we know that Sim is gonna be hammering that grasslands. Uh, pretty pretty consistently. Um, oh, it's definitely not too late, you know. And now I mean, he's gonna have to take food once yeah. more. Now now Davim got rid of that hummingbird, and he's probably regretting that because that would have been, you know, not a bad option to to go in that grasslands and you just start spamming that free food and, and trying to get some of these big point birds down. Yeah, I don't know what Sim's thinking hard about here. I, I guess are they are they considering laying eggs? I think and... they don't like. Yeah, they don't like the fact that they have to take an extra food to play the wave. Yeah, but it's you know you you do what has to be done. I think the I think they have to go for this raven, but it's just a question of how do they pick it up? You know, do you do you go for eggs and and get it via the tux, or do you pick it up? Because I think they they want uh, they want that trapper to swan as well. Because obviously that's a nice big point bird. Oh, no, you, you're gonna have to take cards anyway. Mm. Oh yeah. Well, they're, they're gonna have to take cards, but they're also gonna have to lay eggs at I'm some not, point because. Not sure what the hesitation yeah. is. Yeah. Because they've only got one egg at the moment. That's that means they need another egg before before picking up the raven. But yeah, there we go. That I think is the is the right play. Oh, hello. <laughs> you can't have them both. <laughs> you can only have one. You've only got one space. Well, at least uh, at least you know your opponent's not getting that card. At least I think that's the that's the positive spin. It, this, this reminds me of um, uh, what tournament was it where you played in the finals against Sim? Oh, and I'm just thinking of that meme meme of where all the OP yeah. boys and Sim's <laughs> like ah they were in my hands all along. <laughs> yeah, when you draw them both on the same turn, that's uh, that's a nice little surprise. But um, yeah, Devim's going to need some nice free cards here. Ah, it's not to be, not to be, sadly. Maybe that Sandpiper? I don't know. Potentially a bit late, but easy to play with the Phoebe, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's, it is going to be a bit slow for Sim, this. You know, they've they've got the cards they need, but they don't have the food for the Raven and they don't have the eggs. So that's one turn laying eggs and one turn picking up food. And then finally on that third turn, they can get this Raven down. Um, and, and then you only get sort of 
six, maybe seven turns of, of you know, being able to actually use it. And then obviously you want to be playing some big point players as well. So uh, it's it's tricky, I think, this for Sim. It's, it's hard to say that when you've been given a Raven on top of this Grasslands, but it's kind of a little bit on the borderline of, of being potentially too late. Oh, no, I don't, I don't agree. I think he has plenty enough time. Mm. Um, the only thing, and you know, kind of beating on a dead horse here, but it would have been nice to keep keep the egret. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know, absolutely. Because if he keeps the egret, um, then he would have just had mm. to use the wave until he can play both. Yeah. And that just creates that many more X spaces, and he can exactly continue hammering down the. Yeah, lens. I mean, to be honest, I don't think X space is going to be a huge problem. They've already got loads of X space and only generating three eggs, maybe four if they start discarding food. So I, I don't think they've got enough turns to be to be worrying about filling up there. But um, yeah, how how do you play this with your Devine? You know, this is kind of tricky. I think he knows what's coming and he's going to expect some big point birds on top of that. But um, he's kind yeah, of. I'm not sure. Yeah, he's in a tricky position himself, I think, because he switched back and forth a lot between these habitats. Obviously, started quite nicely in the forest with that chipping sparrow, then he switched down to the grasslands with the waxwing and the phoebe, and now he's kind of switched back. It's been a lot of back and forth, a lot of hesitation, and I think that's that's not really helped his his progress in in trying to score points this game. I mean, I'm looking at the bluebird right now, mm. which I think is good for the him. Uh, the main thing he's lacking right now is is a bird to play in the forest to complete his bonus card. Did I drop from the call again? No, I think we just lost uh, Sim's oh, okay. stream very briefly. You're you're still around, don't worry. It wasn't. Not... It was. It was. <laughs> me, okay. Uh, yeah, but he has the food to play uh, yeah. the bluebird into Vwell, which would give him a, a good grassland. Uh, and then you know his other birds he has to play. which Actually, he doesn't really have other birds mm. to play, but for the most part, then he can rely on his grasslands to play them, even if it's yep. just relying on the waxwing, because uh, he has the food for. Exactly. But he's gonna need a good forest bird. I think that's the thing, uh, you know, like you say that that blue bird. He's got some options in terms of doing that double play, so you know, you you could potentially look at doing that vireo, which pretty easy with the phoebe or even the woodcock for big points. So, I think that's his key is is trying to get some of these birds down and actually scoring points while doing that because at the moment he's not really got um the point scoring in the other habitats you know his forest is only getting a couple of points his wetlands is getting a couple of points his grasslands gets four points if he does that tuck so it's nice but it's a little bit spread out and you kind of you compare that to what sim is going to have set up that grasslands on its own is going to be scoring you know six or seven points every turn and he can just hammer that i think for Devim, he needs to kind of think carefully and and make sure that he's using these habitats in the in the right way because at the moment like i say it's just a little bit too spread out i think in terms of trying to score points in this late game yeah yeah for sure uh i mean the good thing with sim actually is because he has five birds um depending on how many turns he has uh, he can limit the number of birds he plays mm. using the wave and, and then use one of the two foods of the wave yep. to generate the next egg yeah um, I think but that's going back to the yeah. theme. Not going gone. back to the theme, I think he's really just going to need a, a good forest bird, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think that um, that woodpecker that would have been nice. Obviously, couldn't get his hands on that because because Sim denied it. But um, yeah, it's it's tricky. I think for for Devim at the moment because you know he's he's not got those card cycling birds that Sim does. And when you find yourself in that position in the late game, you are forcing yourself to draw cards and kind of gamble on that deck. And that's that's very tricky because if you don't draw anything good, you're kind of stuck with what you've got. And I don't think Devim is, yeah, is going to yeah. want to have to gamble too much there. <laughs> I think Devim... I'm going to be honest, it's been... It's been a... Play for Devim all together. Yeah. Know? Um... I think he's had a fair few hard decisions to make. I still think I would 100% definitely take the bluebird mm. and hope to get um, a good forest bird on, on the same turn. Yeah, I, I I think I have to agree. I mean, I don't know. I, as a last resort, I guess they've got that Stella's J. You know, it works with the end of round goal, which they may or may not need anyway, to be honest. But 
uh, yeah, I think they they need something good. They need a uh, you know Boreal or or some kind of bonus card giving bird. That's what they're they're going to have to be gambling on. But um, yeah, it looks like they're going for the Virio. Uh, not a bad pickup platform builder. I imagine that Night Hero is going to go down anyway. So um, that that kind of sets that. That is for Davi. Only four points, and obviously it's for Wester. He's only going to be a max of four points. Whereas what Sim already has, uh, one, two, three. see. Let's see if that works. <laughs> That's, I think what what Devine would have been looking for, but all right. Hopefully, touch wood for the second time. We are back, and no more uh, circle of doom from uh, from YouTube. But yeah, if you if you can hear us uh, briefly. We had connecting to YouTube. And we'll see if that works. <laughs> so. Okay, for the final time, hopefully, um, we, we should hopefully be back. So, um, yeah, I'll put the players back on deafen so you guys can carry on if you want. Uh, can the stream hear? Yeah, if you can hear us. Oh, I'm getting some good, some good comments in the chat, which is relieving. So, uh, yeah. and Davim is Davim is spinning with joy on his screens. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know. I, I think Davim is like in a water park or something. Yeah. Well, he, uh, I know it's because he's he's playing on his iPad. Beginning of the game. Yeah, he's playing on his iPad, so sometimes rotates the screen round to. Um, I don't know why he's doing that. <laughs> he's just having a bit of fun, but um, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, apologies for the yeah. delay, everyone. Yeah. Uh, Mother Wilbur, I find this offensive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what have we missed? Um, it looks like Sim maybe went for another round of, of cycling cards in that grasslands and found another good, uh, good bonus card bird. So. Still, I think some some decisions for them to make uh, in this end game, but um, it does feel like this is kind of their game to lose. I I don't really see what uh, you know what uh, what Davim can do to to kind of fight this back. I think that I mean the Night Heron's going to go down, but what else? The the Grossbeak. Davim oh. has won every. And the round for now he's definitely going to win this one mm. if he plays says Phoebe, which he's going to play. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, he... eight. He's going to have eight cup nests, yeah. And he can get the food to, to play that, so yeah, that kind of feels like a no brainer. <sighs> That's about as good as a bird, yeah. This is this uh, going to be closer than I think eat. because to me it seems like well, it's going to be sim, honestly, but... yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm not sure. <laughs> I felt like this was this was going to be a, a clear win for Sim just because of that that grasslands. But I think you're right about the the end of round goals being so dominant for Davim. And you know, like we said at the start of this game in a one v one, end of round goals are so important. Um, and just that that huge and, you know, point pretty, advantage that that Davim's going to have. They're evenly matched on eggs, mm. pretty much. They're evenly matched on eggs. Uh, the only problem is Devim completely whiffed on his Forester. Mm. Uh, it does feel uh, like it's bonus cards. Get four points for platform nest. Yeah. yeah, but then again, you know, I mean, Sim is going to have six points from the food web and then four from Rodentologist. So ten points from three bonus cards. You know, that's not that's not amazing in itself. So, uh, you know, I, I think I think there's still a chance. Um, that, that they could get something nice potentially. I don't know. They're not going to play another. Hmm. Oh, well, there's another they need, raven. They need. <laughs> <laughs> they need a red-eyed view. Oh. They, they could have used that double bird earlier. That would have been nice. But um, yeah, obviously, I think they they're going to expect maybe a free worm here if uh, if if Devim is going to lay eggs as, as we as we think. But yeah, it does seem like they're kind of just laying up to 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 lay eggs again. And just try and maximize the number of points they're getting in that grasslands. 
It's not good enough to tell who has more bird points. I'm tempted to say uh, Sim. Mm. Just because... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, think I don't want to count. No. I think it's going to be pretty close. Um, you know, It's going to be for sure close. Yeah. I posted a poll. I wonder... I think that... I don't have the wise to do a poll on oh. YouTube, so I just posted a stupid poll. Oh, I see. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think they played about the same number of birds. And they both got some low point birds and some high point birds. I think probably div probably Sim has got slightly more in bird points. Uh, obviously, they've got more tuck cards as well. It's all going to be about whether the the end of round is is going to be enough uh, for Devine to pull this back. I, I mean, this how how we both guessing because neither of us can count. <laughs> oh, I mean, we could count, but. Uh... Like you, I can't really be bothered at this point. So it's <laughs> so close to the end of the game that I don't think we need to count. But Sim giving us a little sneak peek. So they're going to be on just over 100 points. Uh, I can't remember how many points Devim is going to be on, but this says Phoebe play. Oh, they need to be careful. Yeah, I thought they were going to mess that up. <laughs> Discard off the Mockingbird so you still get that egg. But yeah, how many? What, huge, do you huge say this thing, is like eight. eight eggs? That's huge. And yeah, just three points as well from that Phoebe. That might be enough. This is going to be very, very close, I think. Um, after being convinced that Sim had this in the bag from about round three onwards, um, it is going to be very close. Oh my god! And it is. Is that a, a the spoiler? Is the that spoiler? A, yeah. It's a, a win team on one, food. It's a tie on points. Yeah. Wow. I did not. I, I think Devim did very well to to bring that back so but close surprisingly close you know surprisingly they're, they're close. even on bird points about even on eggs yeah um, so well not not even on eggs actually uh, it was pretty close it was pretty close pull ahead with the eight on the end it's the, the says phoebe but yeah wow i mean i kind of knew this was going to be a good game at the start just based on the the quality of the players and the you know both yeah. both winning tournaments and both winning both their opening games but man that was a, a super close game and a very yeah, yeah. very well fought back I think there from Devine to even get it close because it did look like he was kind of dead or buried uh, as, as we went into that third round I'm honestly consistently impressed with Devine whenever I comment on one of his games because <laughs> yeah. this this was a hard game to play yeah yeah, yeah and, uh, and and equally I think you know Sim played this well uh, as well, you know, early on that that gamble, playing the gallon, you're going for those extra cards. I think it did pay off. Obviously, they they yeah, got some nice pulls, and the the raven certainly helped. But um, I think the that that early game was was very tricky for Sim, and I think they they negotiated their way out of that, uh, you know, reasonably well. Yeah, for sure. Well, well done on Sim. He played the early game really well. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, well, that concludes uh, the stream today. So thank you for joining us and thank you as well for sticking through the uh, technical difficulties. So um, yeah, apologies for that again, but hopefully it was worth it because that was a, a nail-biting finish. So um, yeah, as I said, this is a, a Swiss style. So uh, that means that Sim now has three wins in the, in the tournament. So they lead the table, but this is far from over. There will be a few more rounds to come. And we will look to stream some of those as well. So do stick around, uh, do subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date with that. And also, uh, if you're not part of the Discord, come and join us. You can see more of these tournament live streams, but also take part in some yourself. We have yeah, and plenty maybe, more. Maybe even learn what a Swiss style tournament is. <laughs> you, you can maybe do better than, than us at this stage. But uh, yeah, come and join us. We are going to be having lots more tournaments with the release of the European expansion, which is coming... Uh, in just you know, four or five days time now so very very close but um, yeah. yeah thank you it's for actually us. very well timed I noticed the Zanzibar is the last base game tournament the next tournament is going to be yep. uh, Alpine something perfectly perfectly counted with the alphabet uh, and totally not a coincidence no yeah <laughs> alright well thanks everyone for joining us and yeah we'll see you again on the next live stream <laughs>